What's up guys? I am Noah Gluten. To my left is T, which means we're going to drink. We're going to get crunk. And uh, since uh, I thought maybe today I would involve myself in the drinking part, I thought I'd bring somebody on who actually knew how to uh, make better alcohol than that stupid shit that she always buys. So this is Nikki Sanseri. Hi. <laughs> she is a, a professional alcoholic. She's a yeah. pretty big deal in the mixology community as well. And oh, she's gonna show us some really awesome holiday drinks. Yes, yeah. absolutely. You're a big deal? I guess I am. I mean, if T says so, then I, I'm kind of a big deal. Nikki, what are you making for us today? Um, I'm gonna be making mulled wine, because um, mm. I think it's a very bastardized uh, holiday cocktail that I think that we should all learn how to do correctly. And then I'm also going to be making um, a little bit of butternut squash bourbon, which we're going to be making it old-fashioned out of. It's going to be a fancy day of drinking for you and me, Gluten. Sounds like a new fashion. <laughs> that, don't fake laugh at that sh joke. What are you doing? Uh, it's more of a ruining the day we met kind of laugh. Oh, yeah. Okay, great. So we're going to start off with our spices. Um, and. I, what I have here is cinnamon and star anise, cardamom pods, nutmeg, and a little bit of cloves. So don't do this with your nutmeg because it's too hard. But you're going to take the bottom of your pan and... <laughs> I think I just peed a little. <laughs> it's pretty fun. So you want to be sure to snatch all this stuff. Perfect, so um, you make a mess, which is part of the fun, <laughs> and you throw all of this lovely stuff in your pot. Easy enough. Along with your pot of nutmeg, I just want this guy to float around in there. Um, the flavor tends to be really, really strong when you grate it, so um, I just want them inside. Great, so next um, you do your peels. So um, make sure you get all the stickers off your fruit, Noah. So you mm. don't want stickers in your fruit? Yeah, that was your job, but you know, good job. When you peel your fruit, you're just gonna take a vegetable peeler. I like these guys that go sideways. Um, so just get all this in there. We're gonna peel two lemons and two oranges, but we're also gonna use the juice from the oranges, so. And I learned this trick at home, guys. You wanna peel it before you juice it or else peeling it is a huge pain in the ass. Yes. <laughs> now that seems really intuitive, but remember, I'm an idiot. So keep that in mind at all times. Try not to peel off your fingers. These things are sharp. Um, yeah, that is not recommended, yeah. peeling off your fingers. <laughs> you don't want fingers in there. It really ruins the flavor of your mulled wine. Unless you're a vampire. Or you have delicious fingers. Yeah. It depends on what you were fingering before you peeled your finger. Oh! Noah! 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 There's ladies present! How dare you! So now you're just gonna hand squeeze these. Don't worry about pulling out your juicer or anything. It's really not necessary, so... <laughs> Every <juice>. time. Yeah. <laughs> Every sorry. time we juice citrus Oops. on the show, I get it in the eyes. So in here we've got uh, the spices and some anus. Anus? anus? Star anise. Star anise. Star anise. I think I pronounced that correctly. I mean, it kind of looks like an anise. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a, it's like a fancy anise. Little cat butt. Celebrity anise. <laughs> Celebrity anise. <laughs> um, and then I have three quarters of a cup of just super fine sugar here. So, um, what you're gonna do essentially uh, to start off with is make a syrup. What we want to do is pull all of the oils out of the spices without boiling your wine, because if you boil the wine equals no alcohol. No alcohol means no fun no with fun. your drink, so. Grumpy Noah. Yeah, yeah, grumpy Noah. Yeah. You get grumpier? Uh, we're gonna put about a little under a half a cup of wine in there, and then we're gonna start our syrup. Boil, boil, boil. This is the part that takes a long time. You can get a little impatient. So uh, right now, we have a very nice syrup happening. So, and you can tell that by how fast the strips off your spoon, or how slowly. So you're gonna see that the drops start slowly dripping. They have a little tail that connects them to the spoon. That means that your syrup is ready. So. It smells awesome. Yeah. This will make your house smell really, really great too. So um, don't buy air freshener, just make wine every day. <laughs> so we're gonna turn down the temperature a little bit to medium, and then you're gonna throw in the rest of your wine. Um, I like using Chianti. Chianti is a, it's a drier wine. Um, if you use something really, really jammy, 
it tends to make this taste cloying and overwhelming. What does cloying mean? Cloying means something that kind of strangles you a little bit when you drink it. So We've like all a had terrible like boyfriend. Yeah, like a terrible, well, or a really good boyfriend. <laughs> Just dump a bunch you of just, in there. You just dump it in there. No cooking skills required. <laughs> so how long do we need the wine now that we've added it to the scissor to uh, kind of sit over the medium heat? So, like I said, you don't want to boil it. So what you're going to do is, um, it's basically a bottle test. You basically want to drip it <laughs> on your wrist. And if it's really, really hot, then it's ready. Or you can kind of stick your finger in it. If you do that, ouch, then it's ready to go. Also, I'm giving it a little stir, but don't fidget with it too much. I think people do that in cooking a lot. They just want to sit there and stir things. You're just adding air into it, and then it just makes the process a lot slower. So <laughs> it's better to just leave it alone and let it do its thing. Okay. So we are there, actually. You want to stick your finger in there? Sure. Yeah, it feels hot. <laughs> yeah, it feels hot. You don't want it too hot because you still want to drink it. So let's take it off. All right. And now, um, just kind of up the alcohol content and add a little other flavor profile. Um, I'm going to add some cognac. You can add a whole array of different liqueurs to this, but this is what I prefer. So we're going to use half a cup for two bottles of wine. Okay, so let's get our glasses prepped and then we can be ready to go. Um, right. Sometimes you wanna heat these up for the sake of time. You don't necessarily have to. It just keeps your wine warmer for longer if you heat the glass up. You just pour some hot water in I'm there. I'm gonna drink it super fast, it won't matter. Okay, perfect. Um, so I'm, we're gonna do a peel in each glass. So take an orange. Um, after you get your peels and your glasses all ready to go, um, you don't necessarily need to strain it. I love to eat a giant nutmeg piece. Listen, sir. That's the nicest thing I've ever called me. <laughs> and there you have mulled wine. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, Cheers. Nikki. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's That's delicious, delicious, huh? It's great. That is way better than everything we normally drink on the show. <laughs> Can you add popcorn flavored vodka to this? Um, no. You can do different variations on this. Um, you can add tequila and put pieces of ginger in there and lime, uh, which work really great. You could do bourbon and add a little bit more lemon to it. Since you mentioned being able to put bourbon, what about perhaps a butternut squash infused bourbon? What? Could you, could See, you put that in you this? You can't make butternut squash infused bourbon. That's crazy. You well, can. I heard different. Mm hmm It's possible. We're gonna make butternut squash bourbon. Good, because I'm gonna finish this drink so that I need more yeah. booze. Okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna be a big help to you and keep drinking this mulled wine while mm -hmm. you show us how to make Huge butternut help. squash bourbon. Huge help. We're going to cut this up and I'll show you how to infuse the bourbon with it. It's actually quite simple. So, cut off his little ends and then you're gonna peel him. When you cut your squash to infuse your bourbon, you're gonna cut about quarter to a half an inch slices after you cut your squash in half. Um, and then you cut these into quarter to a half an inch sticks. So then you cut these, you make these little cubes and you put them on your baking tray like that. Except well, you, do it, what? you do it to the whole squash, but yeah. we're not doing it because you get the idea. Yeah. Just for the sake of we're time. We're doing a minimalist squash today. For medium-sized squash, uh, what you're gonna use is a quarter cup of sugar and one teaspoon of cinnamon. And your squash will cover this entire tray. Um, you just dust it on like this. You know. <laughs> Bam! <laughs> It wasn't bam, it was more effeminate. It's, it was a, like, it's a fairy dust. It was bomb. <laughs> so you mix it up, make sure that all your squash is coated, coated on your pan, um, and then you just pop it in your oven at 350 for about, I don't know, 15 minutes or so until all of your squash is 16. golden brown. 
16 and three quarters. So as with baking anything, you want it golden brown. Golden brown. So always the desired outcome. Yes, exactly. Um, so once you pull your squash out of the oven and it's golden brown, you let it cool. Um, after it's cooled, you need to pour out about, uh, I would say four ounces or so, four to five ounces of your bourbon. So you want to drink that as fast as possible. Yeah. And you can actually drink that then. Then you can make yourself a little drink um, while you're making this, which makes it even more fun. So, uh, and then you leave your squash in there for uh, about two days is all it takes. This has been in there for five days right now, um, but it can stay in there for, um, for up to a year. Yeah, so the longer you leave the squash in there, the more flavor it imparts, and it actually is really beautiful after even a few months if you have it still left over. And that <laughs> is how you infuse bourbon yes. with butternut squash. Boom. 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 So now Nikki's gonna show us how to make an old fashioned with this awesome butternut squash infused bourbon. Yeah. Um, old fashions are um, a really fantastic drink. They're really, really simple and they're something you can make at home quickly. And the original purpose of the old fashioned was like what you would have on hand at a bar with nothing on hand, basically, right? No. The original really? purpose of the old fashioned. <laughs> Old Fashions uh, originally came about in 1806. Um, they were trying to kind of mask the flavor of some things that they had um, at the time, but then they started making it with better spirits. Um, and then they learned that they created a beautiful drink. Um, it's one of the original cocktails. And Americans, um, this is what we contributed to the world at first when we colonized, was cocktails and cocktail culture. And disease. This is a jigger, so uh, we're gonna What use... did you call me? Okay. Yeah, sorry. You <laughs> should jigger what? <laughs> You're gonna use a quarter of an ounce of maple syrup. And throw that in your glass. Make everything in the glass so you don't have to dirty another glass. Um, we're gonna use a few dashes of Regan's. That's an about orange four. bitter. This is orange bitters. I like these the best. I got that one right. Um, this also, we're going to be using a whiskey barrel aged bitters from Fee's Brothers. So um, I like these, they have a little bit more cinnamon notes to them. They taste like fall. So. What exactly are bitters to the uninitiated? Um, bitters are made out of roots and herbs and they have a little bit of alcohol content in them. And they're really, it's kind of like using an extract. You're gonna pour two ounces of your butternut squash bourbon. Make sure that you strain it or you can use a pour spout and just stick it in the top and I'll strain it all out for you. Um, we're gonna throw that in the glass. I like using these big ice cubes for old fashions. Um, the Tavolo, it's a perfect cube tray. They're one inch by one inch. Um, so we're gonna pop, it takes, I think it's gonna take about two ice cubes. And I like to crack them using this spoon. This is um, a bar spoon. This is a bar spoon, but there's all <laughs> different it. kinds. There's ones with a weight on the top for stirring. And there's ones like this for smashing like your little sugar cube in your old fashioned or for cracking ice. This is the one I prefer, so. You're just gonna stir this a little bit just to get some water in there. An old fashioned is bitters, sugar, water, and spirit. And that's all that it is. And in this case, we use the maple syrup instead of sugar. Yes, exactly. So after you stir, um, your cocktail is gonna look a little dead because you just melted all of your ice. So to make it look fresh and presentable, you're gonna crack another cube for the top. So you have nice fresh ice. There we go. And. It's very rustic looking ice cubes. And then you're going to put an orange peel. So you take your vegetable peeler again. More like a fruit peeler. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and um, you wanna get all the oils out of the orange peel. So to do that, you're gonna just center it over your glass like this, and it'll spray the oils right over the top. All right, Noah. And that's it. I get to have it? Yeah, you get to have it. Oh, I don't like this show anymore. <laughs> hey, T, I want to drink this cocktail <laughs> by myself. You are so fired. <laughs> oh, that's delicious. You should try it. I'll let you have a sip. Thanks, pal. Uh-huh. You're rehired. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, guys, we've done it all. We we had some mulled wine. We had some old fashioned. We learned mm -hmm. how to infuse bourbon with butternut squash, which is something. I had never heard it before, but now I just need intravenously at all times. It's amazing. <laughs> Perfect. We drank a lot. Yes. We uh, we mainly just drank a lot. She yeah. did all the work, and did I a just lot of work. and I just laid there and took it. And it was uh, I gotta say, it was pretty fantastic. It's like all of my relationships. If you guys want to have uh, more drink demos with Nikki and us two uh, here on the Food Feeder, hit the thumbs up because if she comes back, Mel will probably agree to get drunk. Uh huh. Well, cheers. Cheers. Once again, yeah. you end up with two drinks. This is my favorite show. Uh, <laughs> be sure to subscribe to Taste It and be sure to let us know if you guys try out any of these drinks for yourselves. It's the holidays. Why not? You're getting drunk anyway. Why not make it fancy? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs>